Hello and welcome to this Bite Size PD where I am going to cover copy leaks, which is the new plagiarism checker with AI detection that's now available in Canvas. So the learning intentions for this session is you're going to learn about copy leaks, that new plagiarism in checker in Canvas, so that you can easily scan for student submissions for plagiarism, including content generated by AI programs like ChatGPT and BARD. I'm also going to show you some other filtering options that I think are pretty awesome uh, to support you with this process. And then the success criteria is you'll know you've learned this when you can enable copy leaks to an assignment, adjust the scan settings, view and access the similarity reports, and then use copy leaks as a teaching opportunity. So here's the agenda of what will be covered today. So you'll see I'm going to start with what is copy leaks, how to enable it, um, how to adjust those scan settings, accessing and viewing that similarity report. Um, I'll talk about the similarity report and then how students can view and access if you choose to enable that for them. And then I'll end with things to consider and how you can use copy leaks as a teaching opportunity. So let's get started. So what is CopyLeaks? Um, as I've been saying, it's a plagiarism detection software. If you've used Turnitin or Unicheck that we've had over the years, it's a very similar process. Um, in fact, you're gonna feel like it's very familiar. And if you've never used it before, that's okay. It's still a really easy program to use. It detects AI generated content, including ChatGPT and BARD. And when I did this, this training the first time, I actually had a teacher ask me, how does it detect and how does it know it's AI generated content? I actually don't know that specific answer. Um, I'm sure it's something with the way that they developed their program. They probably have some algorithms um, that can help figure that out. But something about if you've never used ChatGPT or BARD, I recommend going on there and trying it out as a teacher, like get familiar with it. I'm not going to lie, I've actually used it quite a bit. And I don't use ChatGPT and Bard and just copy and paste whatever it generates for me. I actually use it as a way to support me, maybe when I'm writing a letter of recommendation or trying to create a rubric. It gives me a good start, and I never just copy and paste. I actually will take some of the sentences that it creates for me, and then I'll adjust it and make it my own. So I add my own voice. So something to know about these programs is... Uh, when it's ChatGPT or Bard, it's a computer writing, whatever it is. And so there's not this voice that should be present from like a student's point of view or a student's, um, a student's voice or tone. Um, I also recognize that a lot of similar words get used, like furthermore, it's very matter of fact. It feels very um, computer-like. Um, <clears throat> so very little personality comes out. And then very rarely, I mean, I think this is getting better, but it doesn't do a great job of cit citations or um, referencing previous work. So anyway, I can't tell you for sure how this program is detecting it, but if you haven't been on those two programs, go try it out as a teacher. So I think you that can help you kind of see there's a common tone when it comes to these chat GPT and BARD, and it's not a human tone. Um, this program will also detect multiple forms of paraphrasing. Um, it performs image-based text plagiarism. It exposes attempts to deceive detection software. And I shared this with a training I did the other day where I learned this from my 19-year-old <clears throat> niece who's currently at UVU. And she said that her, she's heard, she didn't admit that she actually did this, but when a teacher requires a certain word limit, so maybe they're writing an essay that has to be 500 words. If a student has about 350 and they realize, oh no, I need 150 more, what they'll do is they'll actually maybe copy a paragraph and change the text to white. So the teacher doesn't see it, but the program is recognizing that the number of words is there. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's so smart. I haven't done it, but I was like, that's a really tricky way. And there's, I'll show you a setting in the scan settings where you can actually look for that. And then it detects plagiarism in source code. And when I looked this up to know for sure what it was talking about, it's talking about like the HTML code. So for my programming teachers out there, um, it can support you with that. Now I haven't actually tried it out, so I think it's worth my programming teachers. Check it out and see how it does um, in checking for plagiarism, like copying and pasting of specific code. 
So when enabling copy links to an assignment, I'm gonna kind of walk through some of the basics and I have a video here if you wanna watch a video demonstration later. Um, I'll actually get out of this presentation and go into Canvas and just do a demonstration for you, but I wanna talk through some things first before I do that. So step number one is you create your assignment using a typ the typical process. And this right here is just the minute mark on the video of where that gets talked about. So you go through your same process where you add a title, you have your assignment details, when it comes to the submission type, you want to make sure you select either text entry or file uploads, or maybe you provide both as an option. At this time, it doesn't work with like the Google LTI or an external tool option. So if you do have students completing their writing in a Google Doc, you'd actually want them to download it as a file and upload that file, which kids can do. They just might have to be shown how to do that the first time. Um, so you have to make sure one or both of these doesn't have to be both at least one of these is selected and then you get the option to choose the play, plagiarism option and copy leaks will be the only option available and then after you select this you'll be directed to click a link that says edit scan details and i'll show you some highlights in just a moment and i'll actually get in there and then when you're done you publish your assignment and make it live for students so with the scan settings, and I'll show you this piece in just a moment, um, you can adjust the filter, meaning you can identify what you want to include or exclude from the scan. Example, that AI generated content. Uh, there is an option for my world language teachers for a cross language detection, where you can identify a language to include during the scan. So example, French and Spanish. And then the online sources, you can identify the online resources you want to include or exclude during the scan. Some of the highlights that I've really got excited about is the ability to um, detect AI generated content. And it's pretty basic and I'll show you where it basically will just say we can't confirm that this was written by a human. And then you can also exclude a template or uh, exclude content from a template. So what that means is if you give your students a template to start from, uh, which is a great scaffold and great support for students, you can upload the file and it will actually eliminate any of the text from that template. And so you won't, the kids won't get marked down for, you know, identical um, plagiarism. And then when I told you about my niece who liked to, um, oh, once again, she didn't admit to it, but she told me about the hidden character in white ink option that kids have learned. Um, you can actually enable the cheat detection where it will search for hidden characters in white ink or also special characters from other languages. So. I'm going to get out of this presentation for a hot moment and we're going to go into Canvas and I'll just walk you through that process. So like I said, you create your assignment like normal. And I'll call this copy leaks. You give your details. You do your point value. So once again, your assignment details, just like normal. With that submission type, it has to be online and you have to either select text entry or file uploads, because notice right now I'm not seeing a plagiarism checker option. I don't see that until I select um, one of the options. So here's my plagiarism review. I click on copy leaks. And then this is where when I say you're being directed to edit scan settings, there's the link here that you do have to click. And something I learned, it took me a minute to figure this out because I was on this page, I, I updated my settings and I'm like, now how do I get back to my assignment? It actually opens those settings in a different tab. So I hit edit scan settings, it opened a new tab. And then this is where <clears throat> I can, if I have a template, I can upload that file here um, for the filter. I can click on AI generated content, so it detects that. This is where I can decide what I want it to exclude. Um, if you're not concerned about paraphrasing, you can always uncheck that. Um, you can adjust the, the uh, sensitivity, like how strict it is. I've left this alone, um, but you'll see where it says control the level of sensitivity used according to the speed of the scan. So I've just left it alone, but you can definitely explore that. And then you can click on the enable with the cheat detection. Um, underneath that, you have the cross language, the online resources, the internal resources. I just leave this as it is. It'll compare to any previous scans, which can be helpful if you teach multiple periods. So you can check to see if students are submitting the same paper that their friend did the period before. 
So something I have learned is that you do have to do these settings every time. It doesn't automatically save what you've um, selected for each assignment, but I'm gonna click on save settings and then I will close that tab and then I can continue with my assignment and click on save. So those are the steps in creating your assignment and enabling the copy leaks for your um, to detect for plagiarism. So once you've done that and students submit, you now have the ability to access the similarity report. Now there is, so like Unicheck and Turnitin, there was the option when you go to the gradebook view where you see a list of your students, there's still that color coding little tags that will show up. So you can quickly see, um, if you see anyone with red, that's probably someone you wanna go check because red, red's like stop, red is bad. It means it's probably very plagiarized. Um, blue usually means it's okay, but that's where I think green's okay too. So that's where you can actually quickly view and then click on the students you want to actually explore a little further. But another way you can do that as you're grading assignments as well is when you're in the speed grader and you view the submission on the right hand side you'll actually see a similarity score preview which is this little icon it's color coded and it has a percentage and when you click on that that will actually take you into the similarity report where you can see alerts and the alert is what will alert you that there was AI detected. And I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, it identifies the similarity types if it's identical, meaning word for word, if there were some minor changes or paraphrased. The paraphrase I actually find interesting. So even though I, I might keep saying, ah, oh, maybe you don't care about if it's paraphrased, I'm gonna show you an example of how something was paraphrased and you can decide if you wanna include that or not. Um, the results, these results right here will go from um, like the most, the most plagiarized to the least, so ranked by similarity, and then you can actually click for a side-by-side -side, um, comparison. So this link, if you wanna click on it and actually access a sample interactive report, um, this is what it will look like. So you'll see I have a 44% match, meaning this is telling me about 44% of it is plagiarized. But if I click the see alert, this is gonna let me know that um, we are unable to verify that the text was written by a human. And if I scroll down, it should show me what part, I think I have to click preview. It should show me which part. So the good news is the whole thing wasn't written by ChatGPT or Bard, but the part that's red is what is detecting that I think that it can't guarantee it was written by a human. So I wouldn't see this and automatically accuse a student of using ChatGPT or BARD or another AI program, but it can open up a dialogue and a conversation with that student of, tell me where you came up with this information. How did it come? Because based on my plagiarism checker, it's telling me it can't confirm that you were actually the one writing it. So once again, I wouldn't go in hot and say you cheated or you used ChatGPT, but open up that conversation. Uh, this is where you'll see 8% of the paper was identical. I'm gonna actually hide my alert. Um, there were some minor changes, 12%, paraphrased was 21, and then um, the, the omitted, omitted words, 4.3%. I tend to just ignore this because I'm not concerned about that part. Um, so the color coding lets me know what it's identifying. I like the inter interactiveness of these reports. So if I wanna look at what was paraphrased, I can actually click on identical and minor changes and just focus on the paraphrased piece. And then over here, when I said you can actually see a side-by-side -side comparison, I can actually click on the link and scroll down. And this may be a bad example. Um, this is a bad example. Let me actually... It's not a bad example. I used this example the other day. Let's see, let's try it again. Oops, let's go back to my sample report. Okay, so this lets me scroll through. There we go. I think I was messing with what you could see or not see. So paraphrased. So notice how from the website, it says born in 1732 into a Virginia planter family. And then it says brought into the world in 1732 into a Virginia grower family. So this is where I think we wanna care about paraphrasing because basically the student took what was, the, rather than writing it identical, added a few words or maybe used some synonyms. Um, 
to adjust the, the document. Um, but then you can scroll through and see, okay, um, how does it compare? So it gives you a little bit more insight on what the program is identifying as plagiarism and what levels of plagiarism. And then once again, that C alert will let you know what was being detected is not written by a human. What I'm not showing here and what I don't have an example of is when you detect the cheating option. So when, um, oh, I think the omitted words, maybe that's what the white is. Maybe that's why I'm not seeing anything. Um, but anyway, I haven't tried that out. You can test that one out too about the white text that kids are trying to get past the word count. So with the similarity report, you actually do have the option, and I'm gonna go back into my assignment because there is an option when you're setting this up to actually show the report to students. I didn't mean to skip over this, but I did. So when you're setting up this assignment, after you edit those scan settings, you can choose if you want students to have access to that similarity report. And this is where I think you have the opportunity to use copy links as a teaching tool versus more as a, um, I don't wanna say punishment, but, as a, a, as a catch for plagiarism. So you can choose, do you want them to see it immediately after the assignment is graded or after the due date? If you choose to share this with the students, I just recommend that you teach them about the similarity report and how to actually access it and what some of these things mean. But for students, when they want to access their similarity report, they just click into the assignment and go to the um, details. They'll see where it says submission details um, once they get there, they also get a similarity score preview. That's that little icon. They can click on that icon and then that's where they get access to their similarity report. So when using copy links, there's some things that I believe that you should consider. First, I think you should explain the purpose. Explain to your students why you're using a plagiarism checker. Emphasize that it's not just about catching cheaters, but also about promoting good research and writing habits. Educate them on academic integrity. Make sure students understand what constitutes plagiarism. Provide clear guidelines on proper citation, paraphrasing, and when to use quotation marks. Uh, set clear expectations. Clearly outline your expectations for original work and explain any specific requirements you have for citations and references. And then be sure to cover the consequences of plagiarism. And then I think with, I'm going to go back with the expectations. And once again, I don't think you should ever go in hot and suddenly accuse someone of you plagiarized this paper, turn it more into an opportunity to talk about and maybe ask some questions and allow the students to maybe let you know themselves. I think if you start asking questions, they might actually admit to you, yes, I actually did just copy and paste. Um, but I think it's a great op opportunity to talk about it. Um, explain those plagiarism reports. I talked about this already, but if you're going to enable the plagiarism plagiarism reports for your students, I would make sure that they know how to read them and then point out instances of potential plagiarism and discuss how they could have been avoided. And then teach proper citation methods, provide examples of how to cite different types of sources like books, articles, websites, and then using those appropriate citation styles. I believe in our district we use MLA. Um, so whatever citation style you are looking for, you want students to use, just make sure you're providing examples and even providing um, appropriate sources for them to utilize and learn more or even use to help. Um, I know, oh man, I'm even blanking on the name of it, but there was a citation, oh, citation machine. That's what I used when I was doing APA style. Um, I would use that quite a bit to support me in my citations. And then I wanna end with this. The goal is not just to catch pl plagiarism, but to educate and promote a culture of academic integrity. By using a plagiarism checker as a teaching tool, you can help students develop their research and writing skills while fostering a sense of responsibility for their own work. So once again, I think, yes, it's a great tool for us to have as teachers to be able to check for original work and to check for plagiarism, but it's also an awesome opportunity for us to teach and educate our, te our students about academic integrity. So thank you for watching this Bite Size PD. Um, you, we have our website linked here, um, so you can go back and view any of our old Bite Size PDs and even access the presentations. And if you would like relicensure credit, we reward this once a month. Uh, the, here is the link right here. It takes you to a Google form. I can actually click on that. So just give me your name, your school, um, fill out the information, 
And I will be updating these titles as we keep going, but as long as you select the date or dates that you attended, we'll make sure your credit gets awarded in Midas. Have a great day.